the truth the girls. Hi everyone. Truth the girls. Well, I want to talk to you about um, a kind of interesting thing related to autism. So this goes out especially to the autism moms. So a couple of things. Number one is what they call the fever effect. A lot of parents of autistic children notice that when their kids are running a fever, even a low one, they suddenly lose a lot of their more problematic autism related behaviors, such as they may be more socially engaged. They might make sustained eye contact, you know, really seem like they're, they're there with you. They might communicate better, have better language. They might have less, um, you know, repetitive or OCD type behaviors, a whole bunch of things. And it's actually a known thing. It's called the fever effect. I've noticed this in my son, by the way, and that's how I found out about it because I noticed this change in him. What a doll he can be because my son is really uncooperative most of the time because he's very rigid. He gets very stuck. Transitions, uh, any kind of demand on him, a whole bunch of things. And it looks like he's a really big brat. Honestly, I'm just not saying this to say some, something bad about my son, but to people who see this behavior, it's like oppositional or defiant, uncooperative. And it, it just looks like he's a brat. And what I noticed was that when he had a fever, all of a sudden, it's like I could see the, the, the child that's underneath those issues related to his disability, which is just a very happy, loving child with a good heart, well-meaning, uh, you know. I mean, he's a really, really good kid. He, he, he looks bratty, but he's really not a brat. So I, I'd see this when he had a fever, all of a sudden, it's like, wow, he's really engaged, he's really cooperative. He's not doing all these weird, you know, like rigid, ritualistic OCD things on whatever. So I noticed this. So I Googled autism fever, or I Googled something to do with like fever reduced autism symptoms or behaviors. And I found out that a whole lot of people have this experience with their kids and it's really well known phenomenon. So here's something that was on Science Daily years ago. New theory of autism suggests symptoms of disorder disorder, sorry, may be reversible. Summary, scientists have proposed a sweeping new theory of autism that suggests that the brains of people with autism are structurally normal, but dysregulating, meaning symptoms of the disorder might be reversible. Don't worry, I'm not getting into that whole cure rhetoric, like we want everybody to be neurotypical, it's not about that. But you ha who have children with ASD know there are some problematic behaviors. So what they're talking about here is they're saying it could be um, that autism is a developmental disorder caused by impaired regulation of the locus uh, ceruleus, a bundle of neurons in the brain stem that process sensory signals from all areas of the body. The new theory stems from decades of anecdotal observations that some autistic children seem to improve when they have a fever only to regress when the fever ebbs. A 2007 study in the Journal of Pediatrics took a more rigorous look at fever and autism observing autistic children during and after fever episodes and comparing their behavior with autistic children who didn't have fevers. The study documented that autistic children experience behavior changes during fever. On a positive note, we are talking about a brain region that is not irrevocably altered. It gives us hope that with novel therapies, we will eventually be able to help people with autism. So uh, what is this locus ceruleus uh, thing in your brain? Well, there's an article here if you want to know more about it. The locus ceruleus noradrenergic, sorry, noradrenergic system, modulation of behavioral state and state dependent cognitive processes. It, it's connected to social reciprocity and also executive function. Uh, the noradrenergic system, like if that's out of whack, you could have like ADHD type symptoms. And so what they're noticing is that somehow when the person has a fever, it seems to balance things out and some of these problems just kind of go away. Oh, in case there's someone out there who says, oh, well, you know, it could be the mercury or something that is in that part of the brain. They have studied it and they found that uh, this part of the brain in people with autism didn't contain mercury because this part is susceptible to mercury and toxicity and holds on to the mercury but they've done studies and they, they found that there, there wasn't mercury in there anyway and you know like I, I don't really want to get off into this whole mercury thing I don't, I don't think that this is about mercury my son is gifted he's like extremely smart uh, he has like an uneven brain development and this problem with social reciprocity and communication is part of it but you know mercury doesn't make you gifted so I don't think that's what it is 
And uh, here is a study, Autism Fever Epigenetics and the Locus Ceruleus. They say, we hypothesize that febrogenesis and the behavioral state changes associated with fever and autism depend on selective normalization of key components of a functionally impaired locus ceruleus noradrenergic system. So they think it has to do with the dysregulation of this part of the brain. Fever-induced reversibility of autism suggests preserved functional integrity of widespread neural networks subserving the LC-NA system and specifically the subsystems involved in mediating the cognitive and behavioral repertoires comprised in AS compromised in ASD. So basically saying that like there is a dysregulation in this part of the brain but that everything is structurally normal and that when this part of the brain is modulated so that it's functioning properly then a lot of those other issues just kind of disappear. Now I've seen pictures of Temple Grandin's brain and I know that not everyone who's autistic is Temple Grandin but let's just say if you take a picture of someone like that take a picture of their brain there's a lot more going on there than just the locus ceruleus so I would guess that since it's a wide spectrum and everyone's different that um, if you look at everybody's brains you're gonna see a lot of very different brains it doesn't probably just come down to this I'd be very surprised if it did but uh, this is a piece of the uh, the puzzle of understanding autism so here's the thing I've seen this in my son and Wow, he is just so amazing, you know. Oh, wow, it's just incredible. You know, some, when you have a kid that behaves that badly, naturally you're going to sometimes think, have I done something wrong? Why is he so um, uncooperative? Why, why doesn't he communicate with me? You know, you, you think sometimes, because believe me, other people will kind of imply that it is your fault, although it's not. But, you know, sometimes you'll be like, well, have I not raised him right? And then, you know, like in my case, you see your son with a fever and you see that he is just so loving and so just like he's emotionally healthy. He's he's just such a good kid. Like there's there's nothing there. There's nothing like, you know, he's like this angry, maladapted, screwed up person. He's not. He's, I, I think my son is very emotionally healthy and I think he's very psychologically healthy, too. I just he think he has something with his brain that's very different and this is what's affecting his behavior. So when you see that, of course you're going to say to yourself, I wonder if there's something that can be done to bring out that side of him more. Like the, the side that is able to interact and cooperate with other people and his environment and the demands of life more. And uh, since what is brain modulating or like bringing this change in the, in the locus ceruleus is the fever, the raised temperature. And some people have also said it can happen with a hot bath. I would not recommend putting your autistic child in an overly hot bath. But some people have noticed it seems like if they were, they were heated up for whatever reason, uh, they get this kind of effect too. So I was thinking, well, what's the other thing that raises your body temperature? It's exercise. And uh, so I started looking into whether there was any study of exercise effect on the locus ceruleus, uh, just to see. And there was a study in rats, but it was specific. It had nothing to do with ASD or behavior so much. They're looking at it a bit, but nothing clear like what happens to that part of your brain when you exercise and what is the effect on uh, the behavior of children with ASD. But when you look it up, you do find a lot of uh, information and studies related to how exercise can improve behavior in autistic children, which probably happens for a number of reasons. But there's a difference between um, mild exercise versus vigorous exercise that can raise your body temperature. I'm kind of wondering whether the latter might have especially strong benefits. There's an article here, study exercise may cut behavior issues in half. What they did was a study of children who were in like a day program type school where they had them uh, sit on a, a, a bicycle, like a stationary cycle, cyber cycling, which involved a screen with, I guess, the scene where you're, where you're cycling through. And they found that it decreased 
uh, behavioral problems by 50%, even up to 70% on the days when they actually engaged in the activity. You know, I like to keep things natural as much as possible. I think probably most of us do. And exercise is uh, a safe and natural way that potentially uh, could improve our kids' behavior and make them have a better experience in life. So why is my son not getting enough exercise? Because he's definitely not. And the reason is that every after school program or exercise sports program I put him in, he's been kicked out because he has this bad behavior. Um, I'm wondering what can I get him to do that would be really vigorous for like a good 20 minutes every day. And I, I think that it's really hard for people to deal with him in, um, in a class because his behavioral problems are many and I'm trying to think what can I do because see the, the other factor in all this is that just because exercise is good for your child doesn't mean it's gonna be easy to get your child to do it because like my son is really uncooperative if he wants to do something he'll do it like if he has an idea that he wants to do something really rambunctious and exercisey, he'll do it but if I try to say well every day we're gonna go take a walk or go for a run I'm laughing because I tried to do that and he would just stop and just wouldn't move and if I kept going because like hey you know you got to catch up to me he, he would just scream and he would just he just wouldn't go so I tried it and it just didn't work uh, but this is what I'm thinking that I'm gonna see what I can do to get my son to engage in some kind of vigorous exercise which is good for ASD and also ADHD which he also obviously has and I'll let you know how it goes. And I thought you might want to know this. The fever fact, one thing, well, that's pretty interesting. And that exercise can make such a huge difference. And like I said, the only problem is how do you get your kid to do it? So that's it. I just want to share this information with you. So thank you for liking and sharing this video. And thanks for listening to me. And I'll see you next time. Of course. Of course.